One of the questions we get asked frequently in the comment section of our reviews is is this processor good for this card or is this card good for that processor? The idea behind that question is that the slow processor will limit the performance of the graphics card and it's not with, entirely without merit. That is what is commonly referred to as bottlenecking. However, what exactly is that? The reason is that the CPU computes game engine data and later sends it to the GPU to render the frame. If the CPU is not fast enough, the GPU will have to wait for the data and will not be utilized fully. However, different games have different requirements for the processor and that means that even if in one game the CPU is not fast enough to fully load the graphics adapter, in another it may be more than up to the task. In that case, if in every one of the game's performance is good enough for comfortable gaming, is it truly bottlenecking and is it truly a problem? Of course, there are some borderline cases where the CPU is just so slow compared to the graphics card that it will always be the limiting factor and in worst case scenario it will not be good for gaming. For example, basically no pure dual core non-SMT enabled CPU is good for the current crop of games. But in general, if you keep some sense in the configuration, you shouldn't make such errors. Now, if we exclude the borderline absurdities as, for example, pairing Pentium or Athlon class CPU with RTX 2080, for example, then there is another factor to consider. That is the price. If the faster processor is substantially more expensive and you need to go to a lower tier graphics card, shouldn't it be better to go for the faster card? In the end, requirements of the games grow faster on graphics performance than on CPU performance. That line of thought was in fact inspired by the price performance charts in our last review when we calculated the price of the base system we use for the testing. That price is 1000 euro and that is not particularly cheap. As a matter of fact, that is approximately the price of the whole mini ITX system we built previously, including the GTX 1070 video card. So, if we only look at the processor motherboard and cooling, our Ryzen 5 2600 plus the mini ITX board and the box cooling was around 270 euro, which is just the price for the Core i5 8600K processor. And if we add to that the price of the motherboard and the cooler for that system, the price actually doubles. Moreover, that 270 euro price difference is a little bit more than the difference between RTX 2060 and RTX 2070. In fact, if you choose cheaper board for the Ryzen, you can even fit RTX 2070 with it on the price of the overclocked Core i5-8600 plus just the GeForce GTX 1660Ti. Of course, the current Intel architecture is somewhat more efficient in games than that of AMD Ryzen and we should add to that the massive difference in clock speed which is about 1.2 GHz as the Ryzen processor typically works around 3.6 GHz on default with the box cooling. So we decided to pop the RTX 2070 in our mini ITX system and see what happens and how bad can it be to pair this very fast video card with that relatively modest processor. Such configuration is expected to run in higher details because who buys a very fast video card if it only runs on low. So we tested primary in maximum details but we'll add the always ask Fortnite in competitive settings. So without further ado, let's start with our test.
Here we go. Ready up. First blood. Should have seen that coming.
In the end, what can we say about the combination of Ryzen 5 2600 and RTX 2070? In Shadow of Tomb Raider, Strange Brigade and Apex Legends, that system is almost equal to the i5-8600K based one. In Fortnite Overwatch on Epic settings, we have again a very good performance on average, however substantially lower 1% lower results for the AMD based system. It is however quite a bit over 60 FPS, so it shouldn't pose a big problem during gameplay. And then comes Far Cry 5, Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Fortnite on competitive settings, in which Ryzen 5 2600 on default clock speed is substantially slower than the overclocked Core i5 8600K. Who would have guessed? Essentially, in Fortnite in low detail, still, in general, it shouldn't hinder playability much. So, what answer can we get from this? Unfortunately, we can't give you a straightforward answer, but just it depends. First, let's address the elephant in the room before AMD fans tear us apart. That is, you can still overclock Ryzen 5 2600 and you don't need as big of an investment to do it. Any adequate B350 or B450 motherboard can do it and you only need to invest 20 or 30 euro in the cooling. But the reward is not that big either. You can gain approximately 10 to 15% more performance in CPU demanding situations. And for the 15% you will need to draw a really lucky draw from the silicon lottery. But here is our recommendation. If you mainly play single player games in high detail or if you play in higher than 1080p resolution, then there is merit to combine Ryzen 5 2600 and RTX 2070. However, for online competitive gamers, Core i5 and overclocking it seems the way to go. Moreover, you can even try Core i5 8350K, depending on the games you play, as some of them don't use more than 4 cores. Please like, dislike if you don't like it, tell us why you don't like it and subscribe to our channel. Have a nice day.